Good morning. I'm glad to be here. My name is Adam Seligman. I look after the developer community in the Salesforce ecosystem. We recently, in our earnings uh, call, announced we've passed 2 million developers. So luckily, the number is going in the right direction. So, so my job is to wake you up, get you thinking, talk about something big and provocative, maybe at a little higher level before we go into the deep dive over the course of the day. It's a great lineup. I've seen some of the speakers this morning, and I'm really excited to hear what they have to say. But what I want to talk to you about, what I want to talk to you about is designing in a world where we'd have 100 million developers. And we don't have 100 million developers in the world. And that's what I want to wrestle with in this room. Because we, all of us as technology leaders, have the opportunity to help make that world. So I want to start with some data. I want to start with a study that The Economist did of 1,300 global executives. And it basically asked them, how, how are you doing? Getting apps out the door. And they said, we really, really want apps, but we're having trouble shipping apps. And half of them, had, their organizations had basically never shipped a mobile app. So we're all wrestling with the intricacies of software engineering, but the larger context around us, the larger context in the world is organizations are terrible at shipping applications. Systems that support them and apps. I mean, like apps is a shorthand here for getting technology out the door. It's hard and there's different form factors and the limited number of developers. So I want to come back to that. But we are working on improving software architectures. And one goal we should have is figure out how could we make the pool of addressable developers much, much larger. Who knows how big the pool of developers are in the world? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. Oh, wow. How many? That would be awesome. Uh, we have there are about 18 million developers in the world, including hobbyists, uh, per IDC numbers that I've seen, 12 million pro devs out of that 18. The number is not going up very fast. It's great. You can, you can learn to code. You can learn online. You can get a book. There's all this great stuff. But the number is just not growing very fast. So how are we going to solve this crushing app gap when none of us can fill the ranks of the developer community that we need? Now, there's 460 million college-educated professionals, and you certainly don't need a college degree to become a technical person or a developer, but it gives you a, a feel for just how big the potential uh, audiences or contributors are to building software. But we're not activating them. We, we require you to already know Ruby or Python or Java and have a GitHub account uh, or take a computer science undergraduate degree or MIS. I mean, like, think of all the barriers and the hurdles we put up that prevent us from including these other people. We're not going to train you on the job. We expect you are a full-stack developer that does front-end development, DevOps, microservices, continuous delivery, and a whole lot of other buzzwords on your resume. So I challenge all of us, and that's what I wanted to talk about today, is how can we get together to 100 million developers? And part of that is going to be redefining what the developer is. So we're in this world of experts, and we want to get to a world of everyone. So I thought that was a good way to start a very technical software engineering conference, architecture conference. So I, I have sort of three ways I want to look at it. The first is I think the tools have to change. I, I had the luxury of getting a graduate degree in computer science. And I learned a lot. I took Dijkstra's seminar at Austin in uh, predicate calculus. It was an amazing experience. I had the luxury of getting that experience. But now you don't have to get that experience. Now you could go to GitHub. The bazaar is there. There's open source code. There's amazing content available for consumption very easily. It's not all locked up in the ivory tower. And, and not only that, you know, not only is the code there, you can use the Heroku button, a little product plug there, but you can use a great cloud platform, press the button, and have an app up and running, and now you're making changes. You don't have to start with formal semantics and verification. You don't have to start with you know, principles of operating systems and networking and algorithms. Just click and then change things. And that's the direction we've been moving in. It's an, it's an amazing time. But it's also, if you play it forward and look at the direction that we're going, we're moving to a world of declarative tools. And I want to be provocative here, and I want to hit this point really, really hard. Because I haven't seen anything in the agenda at this conference on declarative tools. And without declarative tools, we will not increase the pool of developers available to us. So let me show you some examples. Who's used if this, then that? If, I think they changed their name. Did you know pretty much the best way to code if this, then that 
is on a mobile app, right? The primary surface now for coding, this amazing cloud platform, this amazing API mashups and connected things, new flows, is on your mobile phone. That's the new programming surface. That is a radical idea. Scratch. Who's taught their kids Scratch or has played with Scratch? Great. You have been teaching your kids event-driven concurrent programming, right? Pretty amazing. You get to that pretty late in a computer science curriculum. And with Kinescript and some of the tools, you can do it on an iPad, right? So a two or $300 device you can carry around in the back seat of the van, as my kids do, and they program. And that is absolutely amazing tool that's going to enable a whole new set of people to work in new ways. At Salesforce, we have a product called Lightning Process Builder. I won't go into the details, but it's the same concept. Design and drag and make visible a complicated business process and run it in the cloud in a trusted, reliable way, in a way that developers can use, that your business trusts. I don't know if this is one of the important tools for the long run. We're per certainly very excited about it. But this class of declarative tools will radically increase the number of people that can work in your software development shops, that can plug into your architecture and build these new apps. So I challenge and hopefully inspire all of you to look at this class of tools and think about where they're going. Okay. The second thing that I want, to, I want to hit you on is that the outcomes have to change. So over here on the left where it says system-centric, this is a word cloud form from this O'Reilly Conference promotional materials up on the website. Code, integration, cloud native, microservices, I'm surprised isn't bigger. We need really big microservices. Uh, and, then, and then on the right is another conference that we did, it's a different conference, and it was an innovation conference, a conference about innovation. Look how different the language is. Prototype, business design, love, human-centered, right? It's a whole different world. And this is actually like an interesting conundrum I think all of us have. On the left, we have the how we're going to build these things, the tools and technologies and practices we're going to have. And on the right is kind of more of the outcomes we're driving towards. We're trying to build apps that people love and are human-centric and are beautiful. That's what all of us are being challenged to go build at the end. But those words aren't in this conference. They're somewhere else. Those people aren't here. Those people are someone else, somewhere else. Those people's backgrounds look different in many cases than the backgrounds of people here. So I would just challenge all of us to be very inclusive of who we bring in. When we think about the architectures we design, when we think about the outcomes we're trying to drive towards, who are the people we bring in and feel welcome? Are they diverse in every dimension? I personally am going through my own learning journey I've spent a little bit of time with the Ada and, uh, Institute's uh, uh, content, uh, and I'd encourage you, especially for the men in the, in the room and the audience and the women also, but I'd encourage you to look at the male privilege checklist and some of the allies workshop material. I'm, I'm learning, uh, but I found it very impactful, and I challenge all of you to sort of get familiar with this class of material and then think about how in your organizations you can be even more inclusive. Okay. And then finally, the processes have to change. You know, like, I love the discussion of DevOps. I love the discussion of continuous delivery. And then we rapidly get down into really technical architectural details and tools and methodologies that are actually very exclusive of the people that sit very close to the business, that understand exactly what they need to make some business process go, or some call center work better, or some customer service you know, situation work better. And they might want to be able to drag and drop and visually create the process, but if you block them off at a world of continuous service delivery and language and DevOps that is not their world, you're excluding them from the process. We are all trying to get the same place, which is these better, iterative, highly collaborative processes, inclusive of many more people in the development process. So, that is my argument that if we think about a new generation of tools, if we really get focused on outcomes, and we really get focused on our process and make that inclusive of a larger audience, we can pull many more people in. They're not all going to write code the way I was trained to write code, the way you probably write code, but this is our opportunity. And we have the opportunity to design software architectures that can be more inclusive and take advantage of these trends. So with that, I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for coming to this conference. There's an amazing lineup of speakers, and thank you for having us. Cheers.